Steve and Sue Rolfing have been raising, breeding, and doing pack trips with llamas for over 30 years. Their passion, knowledge, and experience has monumentally contributed to the United States llama industry since the 1980s. They are now known for producing one of the most reputable and sought-after llama breeds in the country, known as GNLC, which is the herd identifier. In 1979, Steve's back took a turn for the worse while working for the Forest Service as so someone suggested using a llama to carry his gear into the mountains while doing his timber inventories. Although he had no agricultural background or experience at the time, he ended up purchasing his first gelding to use as a pack animal and it wasn't long after that an intense interest developed which opened doors of opportunities to the Rolfing's future. He quickly realized there was a new and rapidly growing market in demand for these animals, so he purchased a small number of females, began breeding his llamas, and according to him, it just snowballed from there. He then started his own llama packing business called the Great Northern Llama Company, which he was also conveniently able to use as a marketing tool for selling them, because at the time, only about 2,500 llamas existed in the United States. The Rolfings have established a prominent status in the llama market because of their ability to lead the breeding trends, consistently improve their herd, remain known for having the best, and for delivering what people want. Steve channeled his inner artist as a breeder and rose to the challenge of creating an impressive, all-in-one, do-it-all llama. Through his own selective breeding process in a time span of about 10 years, he ended up producing a big, tall, beautiful pack animal with show-quality fleece types including Surrey and Silky. Because llamas have not been intensely bred for certain traits until the last 20 to 30 years, selective breeding for traits can usually be accomplished within two to three generations. Examples of desired traits are body size, fleece type, and placement on the body, such as the woolly ears and face, and also banana-shaped inward curving ears. Another desired characteristic that is sought after is a well-mannered disposition. A personable, easy to train, easy to handle, and all around favorable personality in general is important because the entire demeanor of a herd is so infectious that it can be completely altered by one llama with a bad attitude. This includes the babies as well. The Rolfings are committed to creating an ideal environment with minimal stress, so the troublemakers get removed and placed with an older male or female llama who teaches them how to properly behave in various situations. The weanlings are also placed with an adult, too, so even after retirement, an older alpaca still plays a very important role on the farm. By nature, llamas are curious and independent, and while they enjoy being around one another in a herd, they also have a healthy appreciation for their own space. They aren't big fans of being touched or cuddled by humans, yet they won't panic or struggle while being handled either. They are calm, gentle creatures who are not known for kicking, biting, or spitting at their owners. Because llamas are not usually prone to many diseases, the only medication given to them is an annual worming vaccination. Notice how the llama reacts to Steve as he begins to handle him. This stud is getting a dose of antibiotics because he developed a type of foot rot due to standing in the pasture of snow all winter. Llamas are sheared every spring in order to keep them more comfortable and clean while packing during the summer. The fiber is sold to local hand spinners and weavers and basically covers the cost of having them sheared. Llamas are known for being one of the easiest and low maintenance types of domestic livestock to keep. Their primary diet consists of grass, hay, and small amounts of alfalfa. Supplemental pellets are sometimes given as treats to weanlings or llamas that are under some sort of stress. Because Sue and Steve use part of their 230 acres to grow their own hay, the initial annual cost to keep each llama is approximately $150 a year. Llamas require a low protein diet because vegetation in South America, where they originate, is very sparse and fibrous. Feeding a high protein diet makes them fat. Llamas do have a very loud alarm call that is used when something such as a dog, skunk, or bear is in the pasture. Steve's llamas have never been bothered by any type of bears, whether it be packing up in the mountains or living in the pastures.
Mountain lions are the biggest threat because they are the natural predators for llamas in South America, where they are called the Indian puma. Llamas are even used as livestock guards with sheep and other animals. Because of their fearlessly curious nature, they run right up to the coyotes, which usually scare them away. Some have actually been known to attack the coyotes with their hooves and using spitting. They are very protective creatures. Llamas communicate through vocalization and body language. Although they all can hum, mothers and babies especially use this form of communication. If the ears are laid back and the nose is up in the air, it means the llama is upset about something. Spitting is the most extreme form of communication that llamas have, and if a human gets spit on, then it's safe to say they did something to deserve it. Spitting is used within the herd during mealtime, mostly by mothers and older llamas to teach the younger ones their manners. It's also used to display seniority and or dominancy within the herd. As of now, Steve and Sue keep about 80 llamas and from their experience say that llamas aren't nearly as demanding in day-to-day -day attention. They can graze for days at a time and if need be, store water much like a camel for long periods because they belong to the camelid family. They produce dry pellets like deer or elk that is not smelly and easy to clean up. It is highly sought after by local farmers for fertilizer because their waste is seed free due to their ruminant digestive systems. Steve considers llamas to be the easiest of any domestic livestock to keep. Llamas are great jumpers, but they don't tend to unless their lives depend on it. Also, they don't chew or push fences. Llamas can breed at any time of the year because they are what's known as induced ovulators. Any open female will submit to a breeding. The male can detect primarily through sniffing her waist to see who's open and who's not. Usually a male will not try to pursue a pregnant female, but if he does and he keeps persisting, she will spit on him, which absolutely humil humiliates him. No vet checks are necessary to tell if the breeding was successful because a female's behavior will give it away. By about two weeks, she'll completely run away from the male. Llamas carry their babies almost a year and always give birth in the daytime, generally between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. This is believed to be due to the fact that they come from high elevations of the Andes Mountains in South America, where it freezes every night. 5% of the llamas that are born on the ranch are kept in order to upgrade Steve's breeding herd and also for future packing llamas. The rest are sold to individuals all over the country for either show or packing purposes.